Welcome to Carmanis Cancer Institute in Detroit's Facebook Live. I'm Patricia Ellis here with Dr. O Hussein Own, interventional oncologist with the Carmanis Cancer Institute in Detroit. Welcome, Dr. Own. Thank you, Patricia. Thank you for the viewers who are joining us. We are here to talk about cryoablation, but before we start, please explain what interventional oncology is. Interventional oncology is a uh, subspecialty in radiology or interventional radiology. The physicians in interventional oncology use minimally invasive techniques to treat cancer. Wonderful. So we're here to talk about cryoablation or cryotherapy. Are they the, the same? Um, actually, a lot of people use those synonymously. Cryotherapy or uh, cryoablation are the same. Some people even say cryosurgery, although it's minimally invasive. So. Cryoablation is an alternative to surgery? It's one of the options that oncologist has in their tool bag to use if a patient has a local tumor that needs to be controlled. Can you explain the process of cryoablation? Well, cryoablation is the use of extremely cold temperatures to uh, treat or kill cells. In our case, we're killing tumor cells. It's similar to what the dermatologist does when you go to the office and they spray your skin tag or they spray a skin cancer for you. We put small needles into patients, and we do a similar process by freezing tumors in their body. Um, one of the things we also do is that we follow these patients over time to make sure these tumors are gone. So once you freeze the tumor, what happens to the part that you freeze? So that's um, similar. I tell patients all the time, this is similar to getting frostbite. If you put your finger in ice, it gets cold first, then it gets numb, then it turns blue, then it turns black. And if you freeze it for long enough and for cold enough, the cells die and your finger may fall off. And a similar process happens in the body. When you freeze tumors in the body, the cells die and your body says, oh, this is foreign dead tissue. The immune system wakes up and attacks it and it eats it up. Fascinating. This is Dr. Own with the Carmanis Cancer Institute in Detroit, and we are talking about cryoablation. So what happens to those dead cells, the, the immune um, your immune system then eats it up. What, what exactly? So the immune system sends other cells, and scientifically we call those macrophages, dendritic cells, other small cells that would eat up infection in your body, and they come to the ablation zone or the area we froze, and they eat it up slowly over time, and it goes away, and the cells get rid of those dead, dead cells. Is there pain associated with this procedure? Well, uh, the nice thing about cryoablation is it kills nerve endings, so it's virtually painless. That's one of the advantages of cryo. When you freeze a tumor, it's like, again, like your finger getting numb in a cup of ice. The tumor dies, and uh, you kill the nerves. You may feel a little sore after the procedure from the skin tracks. So when you kill the nerves, does that cause any problems in the future? Actually, it's an interesting question. A lot of people now are using cryo to treat pain. Some people might have intercostal nerves that are damage or causing pain, and they may, that, may need that treated, so we're, they're freezing them. Who exactly would be eligible for cryoablation treatment, and is there an age limit involved? In general, we uh, treat patients that are older than 18. We've treated patients up to 93, 94 years old. Um, uh, we usually review the patient's imaging to make sure we can access the tumor, and we can treat the tumor and see if they're a candidate. Some patients see me in clinic uh, for a consultation, Others get referred to me by outside physicians, outside of the Carmanis uh, uh, network, uh, to see me to have their tumors uh, frozen. Uh, we also attend the tumor boards at Carmanis Cancer Center, where there's a panel of experts, uh, radiation oncologists, medical oncologists, surgeons, um, radiologists, and pathologists. They all meet uh, on a weekly basis and discuss patient's disease. And they come up with an individualized treatment plan for each patient, and that may include freezing tumors. Would this be a procedure that could be used for thyroid cancer? We have treated patients with thyroid cancer. Once again, I'd have to really review the imaging and see where the lesions are, how many lesions or masses a patient has, and see if they're a candidate to have their tumor ablated. Well, that leads me to another question. I'm here with Dr. Own from the Carmanis Cancer Institute in Detroit. We are talking about cryoablation. What are the different types of tumor that can be treated with cryoablation? At Carmenis, we've treated about 2,000 masses now over the last decade. We've treated 1,000 patients. We've treated multiple organs. We've treat, we, treat, excuse me, we treat primary kidney cancer, primary liver cancer, primary lung cancer. We also treat metastasis in the body. 
But we also treat soft tissue tumors, which includes like the chest wall, the abdominal wall, the abdominal cavity, and the bones. For those listening um, at home, what exactly do you mean by primary tumor? So primary means intrinsic to that organ. So the, the tumor originates and is confined to that organ in the body. For example, primary kidney cancer would be a kidney tumor or kidney cancer that originated in the kidney and is still in the kidney. Is it possible to treat more than one tumor at one time? That's a good question. Um, so uh, sometimes we do treat more than one tumor at one time, depending on the location and size of the tumors. So I always tell patients, um, it's like having a, den uh, a lawn in the backyard and you have dandelions in your lawn. If you have a lot of dandelions, you need the weed and feed, which is the chemotherapy. But if you have one or two dandelions, you can pluck them out. And the oncologist has cryoblation as a tool to pluck those out. I'm sure that every case is very individualized. But generally, what is the prep time for this uh, procedure and what is the recovery? In general, we ask patients, uh, like any other invasive procedure, not to take any blood thinners or aspirin for about one week. And we tell them it's like going to get a colonoscopy uh, to be prepared to have mild anesthesia and not eat six to eight hours before the procedure. When they come in, they get prepped by anesthesia. We ha they have the procedure, and then usually they go home one or the same day or the next day. This is Dr. Owen with the Carmanis Cancer Institute in Detroit. We are talking about cryoablation. So just a follow-up to the recovery time. So what could a patient expect to, to go back to their regular activity following cryoablation? So usually when they get discharged the same day or the next day, we ask them to resume daily activity, and, uh, but no heavy lifting for about one week, and they can return to work in about one week. So in general, we don't want them uh, just sitting around. We want them to be active and return to the normal daily activity. Once you uh, cryoablate a tumor, is it possible for that tumor to come back? We've actually published multiple papers on our success rate with cryoablation in the soft tissue, the liver. One of our papers is coming out soon about kidney tumors. Uh, overall, across the board, we have above a 90% efficacy or 90% success rate uh, for uh, controlling the tumor that we freeze. So that means less than 10% of the time the tumor recurs where we froze it or they have a recurrence, which is something that comes back. In the kidney, however, we have about a 97% efficacy, so less than 3% of the time the tumor comes back in that loca location we froze. For those viewers just tuning in, I'm speaking with Dr. Own from the Carmanis Cancer Institute in Detroit, and we are talking about cryoablation. Again, for our viewers, can you explain uh, cryoablation briefly, and also is it the same as cryotherapy? Uh, so people use those synonymously, uh, cryotherapy, cryoablation. Uh, cryoablation is using really, really, really cold temperatures to kill cells. In our case, we kill tumor cells. We put small needles into patients and we freeze their tumors. It can be in multiple organs in the body or a specific organ that we freeze the tumors. We talked about the recovery time. Um, is it, it, down the road, patients would have a successful um, recovery with cryoablation. And how soon before the first cryoablation would a patient be able to get another cryoablation if that's needed? So uh, we have some patients that have been with us for years. They've had multiple tumors ablated. Uh, sometimes they get one ablated now. Sometimes they get one ablated within one year uh, of the first ablation. It depends on how fast their disease is progressing. So I always tell patients we can treat oligometastatic disease, one or two tumors, a few tumors. So again, is cryoablation an alternative for surgery? Yes, it is an alternative depending on the patient's disease and their comorbidities that have high blood pressure, history of stroke, history of heart disease. So um, if a patient has um, multiple cryoablations down the road, that should not cause any problem with their health. That is just helping them to have a, a, a minimally invasive procedure to get rid of the tumor. Yes, that's true. Uh, they, we always try to uh, weigh the patient's risks and benefits before we do the procedure. We discuss the technique of the procedure with them and tell them what the outcomes may be if we do this procedure. We have a question from one of our viewers. What is the difference between cryoablation and radioemblastation, if I'm saying it correctly? It's a radioembolization. So the difference between cryoablation and radioembolization is radioembolization, we put small catheters into the vessels and we go directly into the liver and we 
uh, control tumors. Uh, we, uh, the radiation is given in a dose directly into the tumor, and that helps control or kill cells. Uh, where cryo, we use needles, and we put them through the skin into the tumor and treat the tumors. Fascinating. Okay, I know we've talked about this before. I'm talking with Dr. Owen with the Carmanis Cancer Institute in Detroit about cryoablation. So again, if you wouldn't mind explaining how the actual procedure works, what a patient could expect. So in general, they come in the morning, they're seen by anesthesia staff, and they're prepped by the anesthesia staff. They're taken into the imaging suite, so we use image guidance to treat these tumors. And then in the imaging suite, we do a pre-procedure scan. I uh, clean the patient off, prep them like a surgeon would, and then we put small needles that high-pressure gas gets pumped through to make an ice ball like a popsicle. So then I freeze their tumor uh, under image guidance so I can see the ice ball really well and see the tumor, and I try to get a one centimeter margin beyond the tumor to make sure we got the whole tumor like a surgeon would do. And then once we're all done with that, they go to recovery, they're watched for a few hours or overnight, and then they usually go home the next day. Does a patient feel when the tumor um, starts to break apart? No, they don't feel much. They don't feel much. They usually feel a little soreness, like someone you know got punched in the belly or something, but otherwise they feel pretty uh, comfortable. Could you repeat again the types of tumors that you can treat with cryoablation? Uh, we have treated kidney cancer or primary kidney tumors. We treat primary lung tumors. We pre treat primary liver tumors. We treat metastasis to the body. We treat soft tissue tumors. That includes the chest wall, the adrenal glands, the abdominal cavity, and the bones. And how long have, has, has Carmanis Cancer Institute been doing this, and are they one of the leaders in the field? Actually, uh, I started doing this here when I was a resident, and then uh, I was uh, lucky to work with one of the pioneering people to start this. And we've been doing it for about 15 years, and I've been on staff for about 10 years here. And Carmanis is actually one of few institutions that performs uh, cryoablation to the level we do here. We get consulted from other institutions, actually, to recommend techniques and how to approach tumors at their sites. How would a patient know if they were a candidate for cryoablation? Um, they can come see me in clinic or get a consultation. I can review, the, review their imaging and uh, help determine whether they are a candidate for this procedure. Or uh, they get referred to me from outside uh, facilities or outside the physicians. And like we said before, we attend the tumor board where there's a panel of experts that decide uh, the treatment options for patients. Can you explain a little bit more about the tumor board and who all would be involved in that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, usually the medical oncologists are there, the surgeons are there, uh, the pathologists are there, the radiation oncologists are there, the radiologists are there. So we show all the imaging of the patient there, we show all the pathology of the patient there, and then everybody gives an opinion on whether they think this patient is a candidate for surgery, chemotherapy, or we can use a radiation therapy or a cryoablation to treat their tumors. So it's very individualized based on each patient. Absolutely. I am here talking with Dr. Hussein Own, interventional oncologist with the Carmanis Cancer Institute in Detroit. Um, I do have a few more questions, and, and we certainly welcome questions from our audience. If you had a loved one who was thinking about cryoablation, what would you tell them? Actually, one of my family members had a central kidney tumor diagnosed about six years ago. She was given the option by a urologist to have her whole kidney taken out. But when we presented the possibility of have, having us freeze it for her and save her kidney, she went with that, and we were able to freeze her kidney mass, and uh, she's been able to maintain her kidney function over time. Here's a question. How long before you know if cryoblation is successful, That's and a, how can you tell? That's an excellent question. So we do follow-up imaging on patients at three months and six months and one year and yearly thereafter to make sure we got the whole tumor. Usually, from the data we've collected, about six months we can tell if the whole tumor has been treated. Wonderful. Why should a patient come to Carmanis Cancer Institute for either cryoablation or another cancer service? Well, Carmanis is a national designated cancer center. It's one of the top cancer centers. Um, and as I said before, nobody really performs ablation like we do here except a few other centers in the country. Um, uh, you get empathetic, compassionate care from highly skilled uh, doctors. And we are affiliated with Wayne State and our research program. We have drugs here that many other institutions don't have. Can you explain again, Dr. Own, the different types of tumors that can be treated with cryoablation and how many have you treated yourself? Uh, myself, I've treated uh, close to a thousand masses. 
uh, over the last 10 years. Uh, also, uh, we, like, uh, cryo ablation doesn't really discriminate between tumor cell types. So if you get cells cold enough or long enough, you'll kill the cells. So uh, like I said, that we treat kidney cancer, we treat lung cancer, we treat liver cancer, we treat metastasis to the body. Uh, we also treat soft tissue tumors. So hard tumors as well as soft tissue tumors. Yes, the only tumor types we don't treat are usually the hematologic tumors that we don't usually treat. And hematologic means? Lymphoma, leukemia, those type of tumors. Okay, great. Um, again, can you explain to us the success rate of the procedure that we've done here at Carmanis? Yes, um, so we have across the board about a 90% success rate. That means less than 10% of the time in most tumor types, the tumor may come back in the air where we froze. And kidney, uh, we're closer to 97%, which is getting published really soon, and uh, less than 3% of the time the tumor returns. Fabulous. I know that our viewers um, listening in, they're welcome to continue to send in questions. We would welcome that even once we go off the air. But again, I thank Dr. Own for taking the time to talk with us about cryoablation. And uh, we do have another question here. What is the recovery time? And is there a shorter recovery time with cryoablation compared to perhaps a surgical procedure or another type of procedure? In general, uh, we do have shorter recovery times than surgery. We don't, there are no incisions with the cryo, so it's usually minimal uh, needle pokes. You see a little bit on the outside, but we do a lot on the inside. Um, however, we do tell patients to not uh, bear weight uh, more than 10 pounds for a week so they don't have any declotting. And usually within one week, patients are back to work. Wonderful. So how can people get more information if they need uh, to talk to you or, or one of your staff about cryoablation? In general, if you want to get a hold of a Carmanis physician, you can call the 1-800-Carmanis number. Uh, and for interventional oncology, you can ask our wonderful nurse practitioner, Barbara Adam. So we do have another question. I'm considering surgery for kidney cancer. My doctor has not mentioned cryoablation as an option. I wondered why something they could do? Yes, uh, we're happy to look at their films and review them and see if they're a candidate for cryoablation of their kidney tumor. Uh, some places are not familiar with cryoablation because uh, they don't perform it, uh, but most centers are now becoming more familiar, but we're happy to review that for them. Is there any age limit again? I know we talked about this earlier, but for those just tuning in, is there an age limit for the cryoablation procedure? Well, you have to weigh in all the factors. Uh, so we usually keep it above 18 uh, for adults, and then uh, we treat patients as we treat the patients as old as 93, like I said before, 94. But we have to also weigh in their other comorbidities: do they have heart disease? Do they have a uh, history of stroke? Do they have hypertension? And are they high risk for mild sedation? We don't use general anesthesia, uh, so that's a, a benefit for cryo. They get mild sedation or moderate sedation. So if somebody does have any other health issues, such as heart disease or diabetes, would they still be eligible for this procedure? Most of our patients are the patients who are non-surgical candidates and have had heart disease or they have a history of stroke. We screen them and we make sure they can tolerate the mild to moderate sedation that they get. Thank you so much, Dr. Own. If people have additional information, where can they call again? 1-800-CARMANIS. They can ask for Barbara Adam, interventional oncology nurse. Special thanks to Dr. Own, interventional oncologist at the Barbara Ann Carmanis Cancer Institute. I'm Patricia Ellis. I'd also like to thank Tamara Collins, Sean Cook, Megan Samarez, and Linda Remington for their support, and certainly all our viewers at home. Thank you, Patricia. Thanks to our viewers at home as well.